welcome uh, to the Fight Pass media call. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time out. I apologize, I am in an airport, so I'll do my best to mute my phone from time to time. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm the Chief Content Officer for the UFC, uh, and we're here to make an exciting announcement about uh, what's coming up on some programming on Fight Pass. Uh, we're excited on September 6th uh, to be having our first live event with Invicta FC. Um, Invicta FC will be making its uh, return, uh, holding its um, uh, event this year on Fight Pass on the 6th. Uh, this obviously, as you've heard me say before, this is very historic for the UFC to be working with a promotion uh, that is not owned by the UFC. We're excited to have Invicta uh, as part of the UFC family, if you will. And as we mentioned when we launched the UFC, and, and certainly me and the team that I'm working with, uh, we are committed to bringing value to our subscribers, and this is another step in that endeavor. A multi-year agreement with Invicta, which, as you know, is the world's leading all-female MMA promotion, will continue to deliver world-class MMA across our base of fans. We now have subscribers in over 163 countries and territories around the world, which has far exceeded any of our expectations and our planning. Invicta has been dedicated, has a dedicated fan base, <clears throat> and those fans can now not only watch this live fight on on Fight Pass, but we're now announcing that all of the Invicta library is available within Fight Pass. That means 85 individual fights, seven previous events, which now brings the Fight Pass total of fights, which are available 24-7 now, to almost 5,000 individual fights that are available within the Fight Pass library. This is a huge deal for Fight Pass. We can't be more excited than we are now in working with Shannon, and I'm excited to introduce to you that Shannon <clears throat> from Invicta FC as the president is also on the call. I'd like to turn it over to Shannon, who can give you more details on the fight card. Shannon? Well, thank you for the introduction, Marshall. And, of course, you know, I want to thank everyone for dialing in and being part of this announcement. You know, as Marshall said, as excited as they are, you can imagine how excited we are over here at Invicta to have a partnership with such an amazing company and promotion. So, you know, definitely one of the exciting points of today and me being on the call is that I'm in a position to give you the full fight card for our first event with Fight Pass on September 6th from Kansas City at the Municipal Auditorium. So, um, if everybody's ready, I'll go ahead and run this down, the full fight card for September 6th. We've got Michelle Watterson versus Yutuku Tamada. That will be a title fight at the 105-pound atom weight division. We have a co-main event of another title fight with Stephanie Ignick versus Katja Kikonpa. And hopefully I'll apologize at this point if I, if I said that wrong. But And then we've got Adion Gomes versus Tanya Evinger, and that's at 135 pounds. And uh, the title fight between Stephanie and Katja is for the 115-pound title. Then we've got Michelle Old versus Deanna Bennett at 125 pounds. Roxanne Modafferi versus Tara La Rosa. That is at 125 pounds as well. We have Peggy Morgan versus Irene Aldana, and that bout is at 135 pounds. Then we have Alexa Grosso versus Ashley Cummings. That is a 115-pound bout. Veronica Rothenhauser versus Charmaine Tweet. And this will be our first time ever having a 155 pound fight on any of our cards. So that fight will be at the weight of 155 pounds. Then we have Jody Escobar versus Jimmy Yusfre. And that fight will be at 105 pounds. And then lastly, we have JJ Aldridge versus Delaney Owen. And that will be at 115 pounds. You know, we're really excited about this card uh, to have a double header for the titles. You know, it's amazing. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a great card. It is stacked top to bottom, and I think that the fans are going to be really excited about this card. You know, and I also, you know, uh, we have Michelle Watterson, our current Adam Wade champ that is on the call as well. And I know Michelle's as excited as, you know, everybody else is to, to be on this card. I am uh, beyond excited. I I got butterflies and my heart screaming at the top of its lungs. <laughs> so 
So I guess at this point, why don't we open up uh, for the first question I'll raise. Thank you. If you would like to ask a question, please signal by pressing star one on your telephone keypad. If you're using a speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. Again, that's star one to signal for a question, and we'll pause for a moment to allow everyone an opportunity to signal. And again, that is star one to signal for a question. We'll take our first question from Jeffrey Harris with 411 Mania MMA. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, first question uh, for Shannon Knapp. Um, about how long did it take for this uh, deal to uh, get done? Uh, the fight pass deal or the deal to get the card together? The deal was fight pass for an example. You know, um, well, you know, we made the announcement, you know, a, a while back. You know, I mean, it took your standard amount of time, you know, to get something done that, you know, to make, uh, a, you know, a deal that fit for both. You know, exact time frame, you know, I really, I, I really can't even remember. But, you know, they were very gracious, you know, uh, when we were working with them. Everything went smoothly. There were no issues. You know, it's just when you get into a deal like this, things do take time. Now, I don't know if Marshall can speak to this at all, but is this an exclusive broadcast deal with UFC Fight Pass, or does Invictus still have the option to pursue a more traditional broadcast deal with another channel while events are broadcast on UFC Fight Pass? Uh, Fight Pass will be the exclusive streaming home for the broadcast. We're going to work with Shannon, and we're actually acting as a bit of a broker for Shannon. Uh, to try and get some more worldwide distribution. We have some irons in the fire now that we've been working on. We've been made, waiting for this moment to try and close those deals for her. Uh, and in terms of the U.S. distribution, uh, that's yet to be decided. If it, if it is available anywhere, we may make it available on pay-per-view in the U.S. Uh, but for now, Fight Pass will be the only place where you'll be able to see the entire fight card. And we may or may not uh, look for other U.S. broadcast partners um, in consultation with Shannon to help her on that distribution. And, uh, uh, and is Michelle Watterson there? Yes, I am. Uh, hello, Michelle. Congratulations on your title opportunity. Um, I, I can't think of many fighters who deserve something and who have put as many years and, and, you know, time into this sport as you have. So congratulations. And, uh, how much are you looking forward to this, uh, this title fight? And, uh, um, do you see a path here for yourself to fight in the UFC someday? Now that they are bringing in women, they're starting a new division on the Ultimate Fighter, and uh, you, would you like that opportunity to fight there someday? Um, well, to be honest with you, what I see happening is in, in Rick uh, flourishing and blossoming and, and kind of being an entity on its own and, and us female fighters being able to have a platform to fight on and, and represent proudly. Great, thank you. Thank you. And as a reminder, if you would like to ask a question today, you, you may do so by pressing star one. We'll go next to Andrew McGann with SevereMMA.com. Um, hello. Hi, I'm just uh, curious about the European distribution because I know you mentioned it there about uh, to Marshall about working with other broadcast companies. So, for example, in the UK and Ireland. Uh, the UFC is carried on BT Sport. Would, do you think it would be a simple simple thing to kind of say to them, we've now, we're distributing this on Fight Pass, uh, you see the success with the 135 women's division, maybe the how good Tough 20 will take off. It's something that they could jump at to get it on their network? Well, I think so. I think there'll be a lot of interest in it. Um, we've already sort of primed the pump with a lot of international partners that we've as the discussion with Shannon and I were taking place as we were putting the deal together, we thought we could really um, help Shannon in driving her brand internationally. You know, the UFC is available in almost 150 countries now around the world to over a billion television homes. So we have partnerships all around the world that we're going to look to um, reach out to and find a way to help Shannon get this um, distributed that way. And I would assume that in the UK with BT or Satanta, that they'd be interested in this content, but, you know, not all TV deals are easy to do, but uh, we're going to work really hard to make sure that um, we get as much distribution as we can for Shannon. And then just one more uh, for Shannon, please. Uh, 
again, from a European point of view, when you're looking at uh, prospects or scouring, um, a lot of the female lighter weight divisions have been signed up to promotion in Europe. Do you think it's going to be a case of letting these uh, females flourish on the European scene, or are you going to maybe take a risk on some of them and try to build them up as your own homegrown stars? Because a lot of people are like are excited to see Joanne Callwood, who made a lot of her name of, uh, for herself through Invicta. You know, I think our big deal is we're always, you know, looking looking for established athletes, but as well, we're always looking for, you know, very talented athletes that we see have a very bright future. So, yeah, we could definitely sign athletes early in their career and make this their home and build them up from that aspect. You know, so, yeah, I mean, we're always looking and we're always open to, you know, just finding the best talent out there and certainly, you know, bringing them in and building them into the stars. Excellent, thank you. And we'll go next to Neil Davidson with the Canadian Press. You mentioned the number of countries, I believe, Fight Pass is in. Do you have a, can you give us any information about the number of subscribers? Yeah, we, we don't really announce our subscribers. You know, the, I know this doesn't help much, but all I can tell you is that we continue to see growth uh, the international growth has been beyond what we expected. You know, the Fight Pass right now is literally, you know, it is an English language um, interface. It is English language content. But to have uh, people subscribing from 162 different countries, I think mean, says a lot about the product and a lot about the brand. But unfortunately, we're not in a position uh, that we don't make available the actual numbers. But it's, it's exceeded any business model that we put together, even the, the highest estimate. So. Um, it's a size the limit, we feel like, and this product with Invicta is really going to help continue to drive that growth. Okay, thank you. We'll go next to Damon Martin with Fox Sports. Uh, yeah, our first question is for Shannon. Uh, obviously, I know this has kind of been building for your next show, taking some time off from Invicta, but with this new UFC Fight Pass deal, how many shows do you envision running a year? Is that something that's been planned out on the schedule? You know, we plan on doing, you know, quite a few shows, you know, that num we don't have a number that's set in stone. You know, we'll kick off this first show and, uh, you know, we hope to do at least one every other month. But, you know, th there's always obstacles and things like that. So I don't want to commit to anything at this point in time. But I will tell you that our objective here is to stay very active and to, you know, provide opportunities for these female athletes. And what and, uh, we one down into a number, you know, who knows? <laughs> Yeah, uh, obviously one of the big questions with this, uh, the next show for Invicta is, is the return of, of Chris Cyborg. I know a lot of people are going to ask that question, so I might as well ask now. Has there been talk about when she will return? And obviously I think there's a lot of excitement to see her on a platform like UFC Fight Pass. Yeah, you know, uh, we're in communication with her. I am, you know, very often, at least daily. And, you know, we'll have some announcements to make about that, you know, in the near future. But, yeah, Chris is definitely in because her home, and, you know, you will definitely see her on this platform for sure. And the plan is currently for her next fight to be a bantamweight. Is that still the plan, or is that still one-off? Well, you know, once again, you know, that's an announcement that will be coming soon. But, you know, I don't want to speak for her at this point, but we are definitely in the process of seeing how she's doing with a weight cut you know, and, and management to get down to that weight. And last question, Sharon, obviously restarting the strawweight division. Uh, kind of walk me through the particulars of how that went. Obviously, literally moving your entire division. I'm sure you're excited about Tough 20, but what was it like working with Julie Kent and the other people that have to restart and obviously have this first title fight on the, uh, on the next card coming up September 6th? You know, what's really funny is, you know, when – the division went over the UFC. A lot of people, you saw the negative stuff out there. Oh, they're done, you know. What are they going to do? We filled that division, you know, very quickly. You know, that's one of the deepest divisions in the sport for the females. You know, right now we are full to the capacity over here in that division again. And, like, it was a very easy task to go in there and refill it. I mean, I could have done it the next day. So, you know, it was in a lot of ways a blessing because we were so full before that, you know, we couldn't bring in and generate, you know, cultivate that new talent. 
So by them moving over really just provided a ton of opportunities for other athletes in those divisions. Awesome. Thanks, Sharon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll go next to Heidi Fang with MMA Fight Corner. Hello, thank you for the time. Uh, my first question is for Shannon. Uh, Eddie Ann Gomes is dropping down to 135 pounds. Uh, what went into her decision to make that cut down? You know, I think that she's always kind of wanted to go down, but, you know, wasn't sure the opportunities there. And certainly, you know, with the UFC and what they've done in the 135 pound division, I mean, it sure, it certainly sparks a lot of hope for. You know, 135 pounders that are coming up through the ranks. So, for Adian, I'm going to say that you know this is where she always pretty much wanted to be, but you know there were not a lot of fights for you know a couple of years ago in that division, so she just kind of stuck with the 145 pounds. So I, I think that she's very excited. You know, she's already down to 146 pounds walking around, and I think she's going to be an extremely tough competitor at that weight. Extremely tough. And to also follow up with the 115 pound division, obviously the two women fighting for the vacant title uh, were chosen based on their skill. But how did you come about uh, the process of deciding who would fight for that vacant title? You know, Kacha has always been, you know, one of the big contenders as far as I was concerned. And when we signed Stephanie, which, you know, she was uh, the champ from XFC, I hope I'm saying that right. And, you know, I mean, it makes sense. You know, it makes sense. They, they both have great records. You know, they beat, you know, some substantial 115-pounders in the past. So, you know, it. I think it's a great fight. I think it's an amazing fight, and I think they're both going to be amazing representatives, you know, for that division as a champion. Great. Thank you for the time. And as a reminder to ask a question today, please press star one. We'll go next to Dave Meltzer with Wrestling Observer and MMA Fighting. How are you doing, Shannon? Hey, Dave. Hey, I was just quite wondering, um, what, um, do you have any background on uh, the woman who's, um, the two women who are fighting at 115, at 115 for the championship? And also, as far as the, you're going to Municipal Auditorium, right? Yes. Um, is there any reason you chose that facility? Because I know you've run two other buildings in Kansas City that are a lot smaller. Um, so I was just wondering um, if there was any reason for the building. You know, aside from it's a beautiful building, a very historical building, you know, that is kind of, you know, we want, we're continuing to grow. And we've kind of outgrown Ameristar in terms of, you know, the seating capacity. So, you know, we've been able to establish a great relationship with Municipal, and I think it's going to be a good place for us to, to continue that growth and be able to accommodate it as far as, you know, seating and things like that. And then as far as, uh, I'm sorry, I lost your other one. It was. Uh, I was just wondering some, if you had some background on the two women who were fighting at 115 for your new championship. Yeah, now, you're, Dave, you've probably seen Katja. You know, she's competed under our banner before. You know, I mean, and Stephanie, like I said, she they're both extremely tough, talented girls. You know, they've got good stand-up, good ground. Um, you know, and I can tell you this, I mean, when you look at Stephanie, Stephanie's got wins over, like, Heather Clark, Angela Donna. Then we've got, you know, Katja. She's got wins over Juliana Lima, Adeline Daly. So, you know, they, they have that experience, and it definitely, you know, that experience is enough to warrant that they definitely should be entitled to this title match. Okay, cool. Fair enough? Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. We'll go next to Jeffrey Harris with 411 Media MMA. Oh, thank you. Uh, this is for Shannon. Uh, Shannon, now that you have uh, UFC Fight Pass as a broadcast partner, and we know how well UFC Fight Pass works and how consistent the quality is, does this lift any sort of weight off of your shoulders that you know you won't have to be worrying about you know streams breaking down or, or you know this is just one less thing to worry about when you're promoting these events? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, our biggest problem was never the stream. It was the paywalls. You know, it's a great problem to have that you have that much traffic and that much interest in your product that everybody, you know, has trouble getting paid for. However, you know, it was all, it's a big hindrance for us and especially, you know, makes it complicated for our fans. And 
I think, as you all know, uh, a big, you know, and making sure that the fans get what they deserve is term, you know, so, yeah, to be partners with them and know that, you know, I don't have to deal with any more paywall and to have great partners like they are, you know, it, it's such a weight off my shoulders. And I think everybody's, you know, at this point. Now, uh, when you brought on Julie uh, Kedzie as uh, the matchmaker for Invicta, I mean, she's another experienced fighter, and she's been a, a pioneer for women's MMA, and she's put in a lot of fights as well. Well, what would you say she's brought to the table as the matchmaker uh, for the company, and the type that type of having that type of insight, being being a fighter herself? Yeah, you know, definitely, I'd say it's the knowledge and the experience. I mean, you know, Julie has been in the sport for a really long time. You know, she knows the game she definitely has the experience and the knowledge to do the matchups and i think that that is what is going to separate her from you know past matchmakers we've worked with and things like that so we're delighted to have julia over here you know she's doing an amazing job and i think as you look at this card i think this is a testament you know and we couldn't have picked a better one as far as i'm concerned uh and for uh michelle what does it feel like that you know uh, women's MMA is getting these big platforms now, and it's getting this attention. And for you to kind of uh, get the chance to have the spotlight and um, with this event, and what do you think of your opponent, Tamara? Uh, well, you know, I, I'm so excited that the female athletes are finally getting a platform to show all that hard work. You know, I, I feel like we come into the gym right alongside with all the guys and, and we get to show everybody why we're, um, you know, why we put in all, all our hard work and, and yeah, uh, fighting Kamana is, is going to be a, a great fight. She's definitely a warrior and she's, she's been through it all. So I think that, um, she is going to, I haven't fought uh, somebody from Japan in a while. And I think that she's real unorthodox to Southpaw. And like I said, she's aware. She's fought almost everybody out there, and she's real experienced. So it, it should be uh, it should lead for an interesting fight, <laughs> to say the least. Thank you very much. And we'll go next to Ben Heather with Kingdom dot co dot uk. Hi, a question for Shannon. Hi there. Hi. Um, I was just wondering with. Um, the event now being in Fight Pass, it opens up a lot of the European and UK fans who haven't previously seen some of the Infecta fights. Um, was there any chance of a future event in Europe anytime soon? Well, I would love that. You know, that's, I mean, it's certainly something we would, you know, we think about and something, you know, we'd like to make happen in the future. As to when that could happen, you know, I don't know, I have an answer for that yet. But yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want to go over there and do a show, right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. And as a final reminder, if you would like to signal for a question, please press star one now. We'll go next to Jeffrey Harris with 411 Mania MMA. Uh, hello, Marshall. Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, recently, Dana White also talked about other, uh, you know, MMA and combat sports being featured on uh, UFC Fight Pass. Uh, I think this Invicta event is a great deal for you guys. When do you think we might be hearing uh, uh, more about other organizations that might be featured on Fight Pass going forward? Well, there are things that, you know, we've discussed as a group internally trying to figure out what the right strategy was for Fight Pass and something that Invicta deal showed us is that there was a lot of interest in um, other MMA. I mean, we knew that interest existed, but aligning it with Fight Pass, um, there was such a uh, groundswell of interest that it really caused us to put, you know, sort of our foot to the pedal to find out what the other opportunities were out there. So we're talking to other groups now. We're trying to see what makes sense. Not every group makes sense and not every deal uh, will make sense, but uh, we're talking to you know other MMA. We're looking at uh, single genre um, combat sports. We're we're kind of evaluating everything. And we have a weekly meeting with Lorenzo and Dana. We look at all the options. Um, I don't have anything definitive on when we'll announce soon, but we have a lot of irons in the fire, and 
Uh, hopefully soon we'll be pulling the trigger on some of those and bringing more value to uh, our Pipe Pass subscribers. Is, is boxing out of question for UFC Fight uh, Pass, do you think? I don't think so. You all know that Dana and Lorenzo are a huge fan. I you know, cut my teeth in the combat world with boxing. and um, I have access and know where all the bodies are buried in terms of the library. <laughs> so it's something that we're looking at. It's not something that has our immediate attention. Um, but it, it is something that we'd be interested in doing if it, if it made sense. But uh, for right now, we're really focused on truly what's a big deal is making sure it's successful, making sure we, you know, work in the right way to help Shannon uh, grow her business, make sure that her, her events are well attended and that these female athletes get exposed. And as we cut our teeth on this and move forward, we'll start bringing some other MMA, some select MMA, and then we'll continue to evaluate it over time. But boxing isn't really in our crosshairs now, but easily could shift to that. And Shannon, is there a time frame for the next uh, Invicta event, or are you just focused on this event right now? Yeah, right now we're just focused on this event, but, you know, we'll be having, you know, more announcements and things coming soon. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And we'll go next to Spencer Kite with Province Sports. Hi, my question's for Shannon. Uh, Shannon, I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about the sort of reasoning behind um, breaking out a new division at 55 for Veronica and, and Charmaine and sort of what the plan is with the division moving forward. Will we see more names added to that weight class or is this sort of just a one-off for, for two fighters that clearly want to fight and kind of agreed that 55 is where they should meet? A little bit of all of the above. <laughs> you know, definitely, <laughs> I mean, I like to look at it as, you know, we're kind of testing the waters. You know, it's certainly something we've had interest in in the past and to be able to put this to you know this fight together for you know the first bout you know i think it opens the doors to the potential of really building out this division so you know you it's very possible you can see a lot you know more of the 155 pound fights on Invicta cars but uh you know we're just starting here and we're going to see how this goes and and then kind of take it from there how invaluable do you see sort of the UFC? We've talked a lot about, you know, Invicta losing fighters to the UFC, but how invaluable is it for your organization to have some of these fighters? Peggy Morgan, Roxanne Modafari, uh, Tara LaRosa and Tony Avenger were both part of the, the tryouts for the last season of the Ultimate Fighter as well, coming back to Invicta and bringing some more of that recognition to the organization and, and this next card. I think it's great, you know. I never look at it like we're losing athletes because for me it's always about providing opportunities. So I tend to look at it as the glass is half full instead of empty. We are definitely not losing them because we're, we're providing, you know, a step up in opportunity. You know, and in any relationship, partnership, in business or, you know, outside of business, I mean, it's about helping each other and doing what's right and best for everyone. And I think, you know, the focus, you know, staying on the athlete. So I think it's a great relationship and opportunity for both of us and most of all the athletes. Perfect. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. And we have no further questions in the queue at this time. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We appreciate your time. Uh, we're looking forward to a successful event. Um, Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Shannon. Um, and Thank we look you. And we'll see you here number six. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Again, that does conclude today's presentation. We thank you for your participation.